Uh, and before I forget, the, uh, the uh, Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce asked me to state that they're for this. I don't know if the Northern Virginia Technology Council's in the room. Okay, they'll, they'll, they'll mention their own position. Um, we've had this bill for a number of years. It passed 12 to 3 last year. Uh, it prohibits discrimination in public employment, public employment only, on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. It also adds pregnancy, childbirth or re related medical conditions, and status as a veteran to those same protections. Um, a week ago Saturday, Governor Northam continued the practice of four of the fa five last governors by uh, signing an executive order uh, that protects Virginians on these same basis in public employment only. Uh, the committee may be interested to know the majority of Fortune 500 companies have policies in place to protect workers based on gender identity and sexual orientation, including each one of the 19 Virginia companies on that list. 80% of Virginians favor a state law to protect LGBT people uh, from employment discrimination. And 80% um, of transgender Virginians, uh, and this doesn't include necessarily just public, but they've reported experiencing harassment or mistreatment at work uh, with as many as 22% uh, reportedly losing a job, 26% den being denied a promotion, 44% feel they were not hired for that reason. And the bottom line is that high-skilled workers and high-value companies should not have to look for an executive order every four years to determine whether or not they'll continue doing business in Virginia. A lot of folks who bring employees into the Commonwealth have uh, companies that maybe their spouse or just as a welcoming environment, they'd like to see that, um, that the state doesn't uh, allow for discrimination, at least in their own hiring. Most Virginians think this is already illegal. And the uh, last thing I'll say is that um, all qualified Virginians, including LGBT people, should be treated fairly and equally under the law. If a person is qualified, capable, and able to work, they should have a level playing field where they're judged solely on their qualifications and experience. And um, it's to the Commonwealth's advantage. We need the most qualified people, regardless of um, their uh, characteristics. So with that, um, uh, that's, that's my presentation, sir. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak in support of the Senate Bill 202? Welcome. Um, Chairman, um, James Parrish, Equality Virginia. As the senator said, this bill uh, has been before you and passed for the past three years. <clears throat> we definitely believe that all Virginians, including gay and transgender Virginians, shouldn't be discriminated or denied the opportunity to work for their government, and so we encourage you to support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, mostly uh, because there are a couple of new faces on this committee, I just want to point out that there is not currently in Virginia law any codified protection against discrimination for anyone based on race, gender, national origin, religion, uh, pregnancy, veteran status, and, include, and this also includes uh, LGBT people. But we don't have a legislative policy that says that people shouldn't be discriminated against in our schools, colleges, and other public workplaces uh, based on who they are, whether it's because they're uh, black or Jewish or women or men or military people or not military people or gay people. And so I hope you will do what the Senate has done several times now and approve this bill and send it on to the House where one hopes it would get a more receptive reading. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Well, Mr. Chairman, Sarah Wilson, Department of Human Resource Management and the administration strongly supports this bill. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Troy Murphy. I represent the Northern Virginia Technology Council. We represent about 1,000 member organizations and 300,000 employees in the region. And we echo the previous comments and strongly support this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone here in opposition to Senate Bill 202? At Yale, Virginia well, Assembly Independent Baptist, not asking you to put uh, religion in there, not asking you to put anything in there, but prefer to be treated with regards to one's qualifications. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, Bill Janis here on behalf of the Family Foundation. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, we were opposed to the bill, and if you'll indulge me briefly, I'll tell you some of the reasons why we're opposed to it. If you, um, this appears to be targeted, and I heard what the patron, Senator Evans, said originally. It says that he gave percentages of folks who feel they were fired or not hired 
because of their sexual orientation or their identity, uh, gender identity. According to the Virginia Department of Human Resources Management, from July 1st, 2009 through to the end of 2016, which is the last full year for which they had statistics, there were approximately 12 total registered complaints based on sexual orientation uh, to the Virginia Department of Human Resource Management among, from public employees of the Commonwealth of Virginia or from localities. None of them were deemed to be valid. That's two a year, okay? Uh, as Senator Evans said earlier, uh, the private sector has already addressed this and has said we uh, favor hiring and they, they're free to set their hiring policies as they choose to. There's absolutely no evidence that there are actual cases of state employees of the Commonwealth of Virginia being hi not hired or fired based on their sexual orientation or their gender identity. And in fact, it's been the policy of the past four governors by executive order, including the last Republican governor, to not make hiring or firing decisions, promotion or demotion decisions, uh, salary decisions or the other decisions that are covered under the appropriate code section based on either gender identity or sexual orientation. This bill addresses a problem that there's no evidence exists amongst the state workforce and the hiring and seems calculated to be more of a statement of purpose or a statement, uh, a symbolic statement, than it is uh, calculated to address or confront actual cases of discrimination that are documented and have, been, and have been filed with the Department of Human Resources Management. There are other problems with the bill. When you look at the, at, at the definition of veteran, so it goes to great length defining sexual orientation and gender identity, right? But these are very expansive and very broad definitions. And the definitions um, may or may not be patent characteristics, and in many cases are gonna be latent characteristics. You're now placing a, a, a supervisor or a manager or someone in the, in the state workforce in a position where never having had a conversation with that state employee about their sexual orientation or about their gender identity, characteristics which may or may not be patent in the same way that their religion or, or, or other characteristics that are already protected are, they now, uh, when they make a hiring, a firing, or some kind of a disciplinary decision totally unrelated to those characteristics, are opening themselves up to the grievance procedure. There's other problems with it. Uh, veteran is undefined. There is a definition of veteran, but it's not incorporated by reference at this code section. And then if you get down to line 365, I don't really understand why this is, but at the same time that this bill purports to create additional protected categories, whether it's for pregnancy or childbirth, veteran, sexual orientation, or gender identity, it strikes a pre-existing protected class from the list, and that's creed at line 365. Now, that word creed appears in every place in the Code of Virginia, in all 15 places where this list of protected uh, uh, groups is included. And it's not religion, because religion's already on the list. Creed's not defined in the code, but it strikes it out. Uh, I'm not really sure why that would be, and I'm not really sure why the patron would want to, one and the same time, expand coverage to protect additional categories of protected persons, while simultaneously striking pre-existing classes of protected persons from the list. For these reasons and for all the others as stated before, I hope you'll vote against the bill. Mr. Senator Black. A question for the witness. Senator Janice. Jan Jan <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, your presentation. Um, one of the concerns, uh, and, and perhaps you could, you could tell me whether this is accurate, but when we have a, let's say we have a mandated drawdown in personnel and a department has said, okay, we're, we're going to have to cut 10%. When we have these, these special uh, categories of, of individuals, um, doesn't it invite litigation? In other words, if I, if I have several people and I have to I have to draw down, and if I happen to choose and say this guy really is not cutting it at work, and I discharge him, then the next thing, am I not going to be faced likely with a with a lawsuit for discrimination based on uh, you know the fact that I selected him for whichever category he he falls in? Well, that's a good question, Senator Black. If you look at line 47 of the bill, uh, subparagraph C, section 2.2-2901.1, it's actually section 2.2-3004, but if you go to subsection C, which starts at line 47, 
it the, the code um, says that complaints relating solely to a drawdown or some of these other, the, the scenario that you described, shall not proceed to a hearing. But that's precisely the point of this legislation and, and of this code section in particular. Once you add protected statuses, whether it's for race or religion, which are already in the Code of Virginia, or sexual identity and sexual orientation, when there is a drawdown uh, 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 or a decision made on hiring, promotion, transfer, assignment and retention of employees within the agency, uh, suspension from duties because of lack of work, reduction in workforce, as you, as you described, while, while that layoff, because there's a reduction, would not trigger a complaint or authorize a complaint solely because of it, in combination with someone claiming protected status or aggrieved status by virtue of being in one of the protected classes, would, in my reading of the law, and I think in most reading of the law, trigger uh, an action, uh, would trigger a complaint. Okay, and the complaint is just the first step in the process. So I think that's the whole point of the legislation is once you create a protected status or category, even if the supervisor makes a decision about hiring or a drawdown on criteria that are completely unrelated to sexual orientation or gender identity, that becomes the trigger for a complaint and the trigger for a hearing and a proceeding that could lead to litigation downstream or a cause of action. Uh, that, and because, and that would be independent of whether or not the supervisor or manager was aware of, of the sexual orientation or the uh, gender identity. And by the way, the way it defines sexual orientation, everyone's covered. Because it says, sexual orientation means a person's actual or perceived heterosexuality, bisexuality, or homosexuality. And it's actual or perceived. In effect, the language that defines sexual orientation expands the protection, the protected class to everyone. And then what it does is it creates the trigger for a complaint whenever there's a hiring or firing decision, a drawdown decision, a reduction in workforce decision, because everyone will qualify based on the definition of sexual orientation starting at line 20 of the bill. Thank you. I thank the chairman. Any other questions? <coughs> Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, before I have a question of the patron. Um, if, if I could ask, uh, I, you know, I uh, am very familiar with this particular area. And for years, I, I noticed that uh, in, in an effort to uh, to increase marketing to uh, to the uh, the gay and lesbian community, um, one of the one of the talking points was that the average income was substantially higher than for someone who was not gay or you know who who did not fall into that uh, particular area, and so. It just it strikes me as unusual that we take a group that uh, has above average income, and I'm, I'm not talking about a sm small amount, but significantly above average, and we give them special protection under the law. Is there some reason why we would do that? Sure. If you look at uh, research from the Williams Institute from University of California, it shows that uh, for example, that lesbians, particularly in rural areas, have less income than gay men. But this is, uh, this is a broader issue, uh, and there are a few things that Mr. Janis said that I just wanted to address, if I might, very briefly. Um, he said that all people are covered, and that's the point. If I'm gay and I fire you because you're straight, that should be covered. It should be irrelevant. Further, uh, he stated that the private sector already has these protections, and that's absolutely correct. We want the, in many cases, Fortune 500 companies at least, we just want um, smart business practices brought to the Commonwealth as a, as a, and, and in regard to the last governors or, or the policy in this onslaught of litigation that's feared, uh, the other 21 states who cover orientation and gender identity, or most of them cover gender identity, and these Fortune 500 companies, I've not heard of an onslaught of litigation that's um, unfavorably affected them. Uh, and also, it's not just the LGBT community that cares. We've heard about lots of companies that were uh, uh, not coming to North Carolina or sports tournaments, concerts, et cetera, based on uh, other policies that they took, which were 
in fact, discriminatory. We don't want those comp We want everyone to know that in Virginia, we're a welcoming state to everyone. Um, and we, we don't make decisions based on that basis. I think religion should be a protected class. I don't want someone firing someone who's observant or non-observant or because they're Jewish or because they're Christian. Uh, this is really just about saying we, we don't deal with these things. We let people be who they are as long as they're a qualified worker. That's all we're do doing is saying, if you're qualified, Virginia would like to have you. Uh, we want the best and brightest workforce, and we want to uh, make our state uh, a 21st century new Virginia economy state. The motion is to report and properly seconded. Any further discussion? Record your votes. Eyes 12, nose 3. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Senate Bill 423 should be familiar to the members of this committee. It is the uh, non-discrimination in housing bill, which has passed out of this committee and the full Senate over the past few years. It would add discrimination on the basis of an individual's sex sexual orientation or gender identity as an unlawful housing practice, uh, applying to landlords in multi-unit dwellings does not apply to landlords with fewer than four units, does not apply to the folks who are renting out rooms in, in, or basements in the dwellings that they occupy, and does not apply to parsonage houses or religious organizations. Uh, currently, Virginia law provides that fair housing uh, is, is a guarantee and legal right to people regardless of their race, color, religion, national origin, sex, age, familial status, or handicap. Um, a person's sexual orientation and gender identity have nothing to do with whether they'll be a good tenant or a good neighbor, uh, has nothing to do with whether they will be able to pay their rent uh, on time. And th these are really the only factors that should go into these housing decisions. As we're seeking to attract businesses to Virginia, we need to recognize that this is one of the things that companies consider when determining whether to locate or expand in Virginia. Um, more than 90% of Fortune 500 companies prevent discrimination based on sexual orientation. And now, uh, in the latest statistics that I saw, 82% based on gender identity. And that has gone up steadily uh, over the years that I've been presenting this bill. If their employees run the risk of not finding housing because we in the Virginia legislature won't protect them, they're going to go elsewhere. Um, I would add that, you know, in some of these... Um, assessments of the best places to do business. They have added quality of life as a part of uh, in making their determination of scores. Um, in a most recent CNBC, uh, Virginia is a, is a score to seven, but in the quality of life, we were 17 and we got downgraded for that. We have a great wor workforce. We're very business friendly, but uh, we are not always the best when it comes to inclusiveness, such as anti-discrimination protections, which are a factor in the quality of life decisions. Uh, the risk of litigation as a result of this uh, legislation is minimal, and it's very good for business. I hope the, it is the will of the committee to report the legislation. Any questions of the patron? Does anyone wish to speak in support of the bill? Chairman, members of the committee, James Paris, Equality Virginia, thank you. Again, as the senator said, this is a bill that uh, has passed twice with clear bipartisan support. Uh, updating our housing bill to add gender identity and sexual orientation would uh, join, uh, Virginia would join 29 other states, and we definitely do not believe that people should be discriminated in housing just because of who they love or how they identify, and so we uh, support the bill and we hope you will too. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chairman, Chip Dix, on behalf of the Virginia Association of Realtors and the Realtors support this bill, the National Association of Realtors has a code of ethics and already prohibits this discrimination. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thanks for letting me speak today, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Morgan Barker, and I work for Housing Opportunities Made Equal. I'm our testing program manager. And I just wanted to speak to you about some um, testing that I conducted in 2014 and 2015 in the rental market in Richmond, Northern Virginia, and Hampton Roads. Um, and 44% of those tests um, that were comparable, meaning that the same rental agent responded to both emails that we sent. Um, the same sex couples were treated worse than the different sex couples. 
For some examples are that one straight couple was offered an appointment, but the gay couple was not. A gay couple was told about a special that the straight couple uh, the straight couple was told about a special that the gay couple was not told about, and a straight couple was encouraged to apply um, online while the gay couple was not encouraged to apply. Um, some arguments against bills like this that I've heard, especially earlier when we were talking about the employment one, is that this type of discrimination isn't very common. We don't need to protect against it. Um, but I beg to differ with that. If you look at studies completed um, in Virginia, including ours, and other studies across the country based both on testing evidence, evidence and anecdotal evidence, you'll see that this is pretty widespread. Um, and the argument that complaints aren't filed based on this, I think, kind of falls apart because people don't file complaints based on things that aren't protected. Um, so there's a culture of silence that's really um, encouraged, and we don't have these protections. And housing discrimination leads to longer and more expensive housing searches, homelessness, and ongoing emotional trauma. And to be turned away from a basic necessity because of who you are is something that nobody should have to experience. And if it does happen, victims of discrimination deserve a way to hold accountable those who have harmed them. So I encourage you to vote yes on this bill and make Virginia a place where everyone's right to housing is protected no matter who they are, because who you love shouldn't limit where you live. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, <clears throat> excuse me, Mary Brose Vaughn with the Virginia Fair Housing Office at the Department of Professional and Occupational Regulation. The administration supports this bill. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Craig Tolson, Home Builders Association of Virginia. We are very supportive of this bill. We believe that all Virginians should be afforded the right to housing. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Claire Guthrie Gastoniaga on behalf of the 42,000 ACLU members in Virginia, and we strongly support this bill, and I just wanted to remind you all that now that the military is very clear about uh, welcoming all to their service, uh, whether you're a military-friendly state, it will in fact, in part, be judged at some point as to whether it's a place where everybody's entitled to equal housing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wish to speak in opposition to Senate Bill 423. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jeff Caruso with the Virginia Catholic Conference. Uh, this bill would create potential civil causes of action against faith-based providers of housing who have certain beliefs about human sexuality, including the belief that marriage is the union of, of one man and one woman. Um, it's, I think it's important to note that, that Section 36 dash 96.3, which is lines 152 to 220 of the bill, is really the umbrella or the guts, if you will, of, of the bill. This governs what is or is not an unlawful discriminatory housing practice. The entirety of this section applies across the board to any person, and any person, if, if we go to lines 69 to 70, that includes organizations, associations, and corporations. The addition of sexual orientation and gender identity to the existing non-discrimination provisions in, in this section, 36-96.3, are what form the basis for our opposition, and it does apply to, to religious organizations. Regardless of whether a religious organization limits or prefers rentals to persons of the same religion or not, which another section of the bill allows, it is still the case that the prohibitions against sexual orientation and gender identity discrimination that SB 423 seeks to add in that section, 36-96.3, would still apply to any organization, religious or, or otherwise. And because of this general applicability of, of these new terms, sexual orientation and gender orientation, to religious organizations, that is why we oppose the bill. It would infringe upon, for example, uh, uh, those who are uh, faith-based universities or faith-based charities. It would, it would not allow them to uh, provide housing in accord with their beliefs. Uh, and then the last point I'll make, I'll close with this. There's also a declaration of policy on line 18 of the bill, and uh, we oppose that as well. Um, all these provisions do curtail our religious liberty, and, and we would ask for a vote in opposition. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Senator Sidney. A question for the witness, if they're willing to take questions. Um, I remember similar testimony was offered last year 
Uh, the two folks who sit to my left are both very devout Catholics, and I have always voted for all the re religious liberty bills as well. And we asked for help drafting any amendment if, you, if that was the concern, because I noticed that the Catholic Conference didn't speak against the uh, employment discrimination bill. And so if that's the only issue with it, um, last year, one of the two devout Catholics is a very competent attorney. We asked, to, we'd be happy to work on an amendment for that if that's the concern. And I don't think that we've heard from it in the last year and this bill was filed a few weeks ago. So would you like an amendment or is it the larger bill that you have an issue with? Well, it's, it, the the provisions that we oppose, I mean, it's all the way from lines 152 to 220. I mean, everywhere where it seeks to add sexual orientation and gender identity, that applies across the board, uh, including to religious organizations. So but, as long as it applies to religious organizations, we oppose it. Mr. Chairman, follow-up question? Continue. So we already have the carve-out for religious organizations and being able to say, look, this is a uh, Catholic housing unit for this religious organization. You've got to be in accord with the Catholic faith there. Um, I think a lot of us would say that the issues you're talking about are part of that faith. Uh, but if you don't believe that's part of it, why could we not draft an amendment saying that if it reflected a view they held there similar to what uh, I believe your organization advocated for a bill last year that we reported out of the Senate and I believe got vetoed by the governor. I just want to make it clear that especially for, and I wish they were here right now, but they're in two other committees and I'm on my way there next, that we very much want to protect the religious liberties of these organizations and you see it throughout our voting record every time. And if you want help on an amendment, we're happy to do that. If, you, if you're really concerned about it, we want to make sure that no religious organizations negatively affected by it. But if you have a, a larger issue with the bill, I mean, that's it. But if it's simply that, you know, we'd be happy to work with you on amendment. I know, um, especially the uh, Catholic attorney I mentioned would be very interested in working with you for that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, I would say I, I, I certainly appreciate that and um, uh, appreciate the question. I, I just want to clarify that the, the, um, what, has been referred to in the past as a religious exemption. I, I think you might be referring to lines uh, 118 to 123. And all that says is that you can prefer or rent exclusively to people of your own religion. Um, but that's not really what we're after in, in talking about this bill. We, we don't uh, prefer or rent to people of our religion. Um, but we're not interested in non-discrimination based on religion. What we're interested in is, is not having to provide rental housing, for example, to a same-sex couple on the same basis as uh, a, a couple that's married as the union of a, a man and a woman. I mean, that's, real, that's really the crux of it. It's not, it's not um, non-discrimination based on religion. It's, it's uh, the, the adding these terms, sexual orientation and gender identity. But as, as far as, um, you know, working for a, a, what would truly be a religious exemption, I think that, you know, that is something of potential interest. That completes your question. All right. Any, Senator Evans. And I mean this with all due respect. I just want to, um, bring up two points or, or clarify one thing. Um, would the Catholic Conference of Virginia like to discriminate against lawfully married couples that wanted to rent a unit? Um, is, is that something that you can represent or not? Or would you like to be able to do that and not have them live in your housing? I'm sorry, could you repeat? I'm not would, sure I understand. Would, would your organization um, like to be able to discriminate against, to have the option to not allow people who are of different sexual orientations, even if they're lawfully married, from living in housing that you might rent? Well, a, a faith-based organization that believes that marriage is the union of a man and a woman, I mean, whether it's a, a faith-based university or a faith-based charity, um, they would want to provide housing to everyone, but they, they would not necessarily provide married housing in the same way to a, a same-sex couple as they would to uh, a, a man and a woman who are, who are married. Um, they, 
they would want to adhere to their beliefs about marriage in, in the provision of housing. Okay, and if I might just follow up with one, one question or one point. And I, I do respect your opinion. I'm not trying to give you too hard a time. Um, the other thing that I had read about Pope Francis was on April 8th, he urged priests around the world to be more accepting of gays and lesbians, divorced Catholics, and other people living in what the church considers irregular situations. So just a, just a note that I, you know, had something I noted about the current leadership of the church. But um, I don't, I, again, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. Just wanted to make an observation. Thank you. Senator Black. Just a comment, if I could. Uh, the, uh, you, you mentioned the decision of the U.S. Supreme Court, and I think it, it's one of the fundamental misunderstandings is that somehow the Supreme Court uh, legislates uh, through its decrees the moral laws of the Catholic Church and of, of the various other uh, churches uh, of Christian denominations and otherwise. The fact is that their moral laws are uh, come from God. They don't come from from nine gods. They come from from the God, and uh, and so you're not when when you when you look to that. I don't think you're going to find that the that the uh, churches are going to see that as as definitive. So what you do is you set up a conflict between the existence of religion and the dictates, the moral dictates of courts, the decrees. Now, when the Supreme Court uh, issued its decree legalizing same-sex marriage, Three-fifths of all of the states had gone through this enormous process of changing their constitutions, not just conservative states. California had gone through referendum and so forth. And, uh, and so essentially you had one person who made a decree and said this, this is going to be the new, the new rule. I, I would just say that personally, I do not believe that you can have the coexistence of free religion and dictates of the state in issues of morality that are so fundamental as these. And already you can see the First Amendment is being eroded enormously. It, it is in terms of freedom of religion, and it is extending to freedom of speech with hate speech codes that uh, where someone quotes scripture and says, I believe this, and the next thing they are suspended from a position. There was someone in the news just the other day, uh, I think a football player. Uh, and so I, I guess I would just say that uh, you're not going to find the church governed by decrees of the Supreme Court, uh, it's just not likely to happen. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion? Properly moved and seconded that Senate Bill 4, whatever the number is, 423 be reported. All in favor, report to vote. That bill is reported.